And we are back. 542 is the time. We've got a hot spot brewing with BART. It's in the East Bay. Drew Harmon's following it all. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, James. Yes, keeping a close eye on trains heading from the uh, Walnut Creek and Lafayette stations because we're still seeing delays of up to 30 minutes in the area. The uh, problem appeared to be an equipment problem with a uh, power issue as well. So we're seeing 30 minute delays from Walnut Creek in the direction of uh, SFO and Daly City. Also now from Lafayette towards the Bay Point Pittsburgh direction. So uh, trackside equipment problems appear to be the issue and there are also uh, power issues along with that. As a result, trains are currently single tracking through those areas at both the uh, Lafayette and the Walnut Creek Station. And currently there is no ETO on how long this is going to take to be corrected. So uh, be ready to see trains headed from the Walnut Creek Station uh, towards the, in the, the uh, excuse me, direction of San Francisco towards Daly City and SFO. They're con going to continue to see delays up to 30 minutes and also trains headed from Lafayette in the direction of Pittsburgh Bay Point. BART is reporting that all other trains on the other lines are currently moving on time. But give yourself again at least 30 minutes, possibly more, if you're planning on using the uh, line headed through Walnut Creek, as this is going to continue to be a problem. Even when the problem is corrected and they no longer have to single track, it will still take some time for the residual delay to work its way through. Our problem Quick spot and hot spot right now with delays still mounting at about 30 minutes. Right now we do want to get a check on weather, I believe. Oh, we'll send it back to James. All right, Drew, thank you very much. We wanted to talk a little bit about some street closures that are going to be going on in San Francisco this weekend, and it's all in an effort to get uh, families to get outdoors and have fun, bring the kids, get into the streets. The city's throwing another Sunday streets event, and Crown Force Brody Sloan now is standing by with a look at where this will all be taking place. Popular Sunday streets festivities will take place in Golden Gate Park and San Francisco's Sunset District this Sunday. The Great Highway from the San Francisco Zoo over to John F. Kennedy Drive in Golden Gate Park will be closed off to cars, but not people. This is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And just like many other Sunday streets, there will be all sorts of activities all along the route, like free bike rentals, yoga workshops, and live music. Side roads into Golden Gate Park will be closed off to traffic, so if you're driving, you'll want to stay clear of this area or you're going to have to make big detours. Brody Sloan, Cron 4 News. All right, also making headlines this morning, Judge Sonia Sotomayor will be sworn in tomorrow as the first Hispanic Supreme Court Justice. She won Senate confirmation yesterday. The vote was 68 to 31. This is video of her leaving a federal courthouse there in New York where she actually watched the vote on a television inside. President Obama, as you imagine, very happy about this. He praised the Senate uh, vote saying it breaks another barrier and brings us closer now to a more perfect union. He plans on welcoming the new justice to the White House next week. And you can watch Judge Sotomayor's swearing in ceremony tomorrow on Cron 4 News weekend beginning at 8 a.m. All right, 546 is time. Let's get over to the Weather Center now. Evelyn Taft has an eye on the forecast for this Friday. Good morning, Ev. Good morning, James. And an eye on the fog this morning, an eye on the Bay Bridge. A gorgeous shot for you. You'll see not too much cloud cover to contend with, but we are seeing some of it into Oakland. Also seeing it spanning into the Livermore Valley, keeping it warm as we enter the following work week. James. All right, Evelyn, thank you much. We've got to take another break here, but we'll be back in a minute. As we go, though, a live picture from our hot spot this morning, traffic wise. Take a look there. That's a BART train, not moving, stuck on the tracks. We've got delays here, Walnut Creek to San Francisco and in the other direction as well because of some sort of either obstruction on the track or some side equipment, uh, power related, a power outage type of thing. Uh, BART's still trying to figure it out. and We'll get the latest on it with Drew coming up in just a moment. But just so you know, 30 minute delays at least going into and coming out of Walnut Creek heading into San Francisco. So keep that in mind as you head out the door this morning. All right, and a lot of live shot here at the South Bay 101 in San Jose, right by the Guadalupe Overcross. Traffic beginning to build, but we're still moving uh, pretty good this morning. We'll have another check coming up in a moment. Welcome back to the Cron 4 Morning News, keeping our eye on a problem with BART. This is our camera located at the uh, Walnut Creek BART station with a train not moving, and it hasn't been moving for a while now because of a trackside issue that includes a power problem. Trains are having to single track through Walnut Creek and Lafayette right now, and as a, as a result of that, we are seeing delays currently at about 30 minutes in both directions. Other trains within the system on different lines currently running on time, but this line seeing delays of 30 minutes in both directions 
headed both towards uh, Daly City and SFO and towards Pittsburgh Bay Point. Be aware and give yourself lots of extra time. James? All right, Drew, thank you very much. Now to that, uh, again, to that ordeal of two American journalists held for five months in North Korea. As we saw here live on our air Wednesday, it was a heart-wrenching reunion for the families. And of course, they've been, um, they've been waiting for this moment. Probably the one person waiting longest and most for this was the four-year-old daughter of Yuna Lee. Jeannie Moss explores that part of the story. Getting a ride from dad, who was himself shaking with nervous energy, peering like a deer in the headlights at humongous hangar doors opening to reveal a glistening plane that you're told is carrying your mother. What really strikes me is just watching that little girl. The women coming home were the news, but the kid meeting her mom was the star. Their adorable four-year-old daughter, Hannah, Adorable Hana, swept up by her mom, smothered with hugs, three-way hugs, four-way hugs, her hair caressed while she in turn played with her mother's ponytail. Where did she think her mother was all these months? You just told her whether her mom's at work? Yeah, she's still at work. And so she knows that she's in China or Korea. She just knows she's at work. Instead of clinging to a purple unicorn in her mom's absence, suddenly mom was there to cling to. Oh, wow. Hannah sort of says it all, doesn't she? Mm, gosh, it brings tears to your eyes just to see it. I just wanted to cry watching Yuna uh. see her daughter. They nuzzled, they rocked, they whispered. Will she someday remember she was smiled upon by former President Clinton? Oblivious to the hug from former Vice President Gore. She used to draw pictures starring her mother, but while her mom was away, she drew this. She drew a picture and I was the center and it was just her and I. She didn't include her mother, which really made me sad. Looking at it from a kid's eye view, what is going through the head of a four-year-old whose mother has disappeared for more than four and a half months? We asked a child psychiatrist. You have a lot of ambivalence around the absence of that parent. I mean, you've been terrified that they may not come back. You've been angry that they've been away. And even the excitement of homecoming can be a yawn. We could feel your love all the way. When Hannah's mom was away. She always says stuff like we're at home. Well, mommy will be home in a couple days, or mommy will be home soon, or I'll do this when mommy gets here. Well, she's here, forehead to forehead, cheek to cheek. Jeannie Mo, CNN. New York. All right, and take a look at this video. Have you seen it yet? This is that A's fan at Tuesday's game. Officers uh, were asking him to leave the park. He was being ejected. He was apparently drunk, being belligerent, being vulgar. Oh, and they just, they tased him. That's how it ended. They tased him. You saw that officer sh uh, shoot that taser into his back. You see all the seats cleared around him? That's because all the fans moved away. They were so uh, disturbed by this guy, and that's when ballpark officials had to come in and try, try nicely to ask him to leave. He wouldn't. Apparently, at uh, one point, he was mocking the officers. He wouldn't get up, and that's when, look, watch the officer there on the left side holding that yellow, uh, that yellow device. That's the tasing gun. And once, uh, there it is, boom, shot in the back, and there he goes down three times, apparently. I don't know, what do you think? Should they have tased him? Was he belligerent enough to warrant that? Or is it a case of you just need to, if the officers tell you to move, you move, and if you don't, you know, you're, you, you, you continue at your own peril. I don't know, we'll be, we'll be exploring that more throughout our next hour with uh, Mark and Daria. 5.56 is the time. We'll come back though in a moment with more headlines, weather and traffic just ahead. Let's go outside, give you a live look this morning, the Bay Bridge span. Uh, and as we look at the Bay Bridge span, I'll tell you, your commute coming into San Francisco, on the roads are fine. If you're taking BART, though, we've got a hot spot uh, in the East Bay at the Walnut Creek Station. There's something on the tracks out there. BART's trying to get a handle on it, trying to get it cleared, but they're doing one-way tracking right now, and that's causing delays in both directions. We'll have a full look at it coming up in a minute.